And the timer is set for six minutes of witchcraft with me, Laura tempest -Akra. Hey, everybody. So for this episode, going to be tackling another viewer inquiry. Uh, this is from Mermaid Dryad, who said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on queerness and transness in witchcraft. Uh, given that so much of the older, more traditional texts and ideas are pretty heteronormative, with a strong focus on gendered energies and the like, which is very true. Uh, if you are familiar with the books I've written um, from The Witch's Cauldron to Sigil Witchery and uh, more recently with The Liminal, I, I definitely have more of an out-of-the-box, more modern approach to, to gender, uh, to sexuality, to all of these different states that we are heavily redefining as a society, which is awesome. Uh, just to give you a little quote um, from The Witch's Cauldron, where I talk about the great right. And I said, here we go. I think it's important to recognize that sexual release can be a very powerful means of making magic, but it's not exclusive to heterosexual relationships, nor is male female fertility the root of all magic in any way for many paths. Uh, and I talk more about that, but I'm not going to read to you as well, everything. So to break it down, no matter what is in your pants, no matter who or what you are attracted to, it doesn't have an effect on how you practice witchcraft and magic. Uh, yes, it might have an effect on if you are following a very traditional path that declares that you must have a priest and a priestess and a very heteronormative approach to how those are defined. Uh, but when you get down to the bare bones of it, it's not going to affect the power of the magic in anything that you do. Uh, you don't have to, you don't have to be a woman to be a witch. Uh, there are plenty of dudes, there are plenty of uh, male witches, there are plenty of people outside the gender binary who are doing witchcraft, who are practicing magic. And I, I understand where the early approaches come from. Um, in most of the feminist literature, I talked a little about this in the last episode, uh, coming out from the 70s and the 80s is this really big push towards the goddess, uh, to giving women back power, to seeing that, well, we give life and therefore we are the creatrixes and that's, that's really great. Uh, except for when you start to tie down this power to internal organs. Uh, and what does that mean if you don't have a uterus anymore? Uh, is it, you know, I, I've written blog posts about this, like, is my vagina magic? Uh, well, that really isn't a discussion for, for metaphysics, but don't tie your power to your genitals or to your gender identity. Right? We are all living in human vessels, right? We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And I really believe it doesn't matter what you've got or how you identify yourself. It comes down to magic starting with thought and all the other actions that are woven into the process um, from sympathetic magic to doing divination to doing ritual. Uh, you can, you know, get very much caught up on that whole idea of uh, insert tab A into slot B and suddenly magic. But even the great right, a lot of modern practitioners are re-examining how to look at that. Um, modern Wiccans in particularly, because not everybody does the great right. Uh, and I do recommend if you want to see some modern variations, uh, Jason Mankey just put out a book called Transformative Witchcraft, where he goes into five of the major mysteries that he sees as part of Wicca and witchcraft. And there is an excellent chapter on here on looking at what is the energy and the meaning of the Great Rite uh, and how to break out of the heteronormative structure of that. So, again, check out Mr. Mankey's book. Uh, I very much enjoyed it. Uh, I also think it's a great companion to Weave the Liminal because where I talk about personal path and development, there are so many things that aren't explained well in witchcraft today like so many books have said okay go do this thing oh do that thing but doesn't explain why you should be doing them or how they work uh, which is really the root of witchcraft we're always looking at defining the mysteries exploring them and discovering them uh, but um, as he said like what, what does it mean to build the cone of power uh, what does it mean to have the great right 
Uh, and some people just get caught up into this is a thing that must be done because it was in a book. Uh, he challenges that. And as you probably know from my work, I challenge that a lot. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean that it is scripture or one thing. Uh, going back to, I believe it was the first episode, uh, no book is complete. Right? You can't get your entire experience from one book. You read many books and you should have experiences on how you explore the world. So no matter how you identify by gender, by sexuality, that will not affect or detract from your practice as a witch. Uh, I think the more you're in tune with yourself, the greater your magic is going to be regardless of all of those other things. And if other people want to downgrade you or dehumanize you because you don't fit into their little binary structure, uh, screw them. But don't screw them because you don't want, you'll need more of that. I Go forth and do your own thing. And there is the timer. So that means we've hit six minutes of witchcraft. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And uh, if you have questions, be sure to put them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, yes, so have an awesome time. Bye.